conditions. I think we should be concerned. Multiple fires pop up across Colorado as the state battles extreme fire danger. They have gotten progressively bigger, progressively worse, progressively more just in the last several years. We want to make sure that Colorado is ready. Colorado now investing millions of dollars to fight wildfires this year. There's such demand for uh, the assets during fire season. We are not going to sit back and watch our state go up in flames. Earth Day in Colorado marred by extreme wildfire danger throughout our state. Good evening and thank you so much for joining us for Denver 7 News at 5. I'm Ann Trujillo. And I'm Danny New. Areas from Boulder down to Pueblo are under critical fire danger through tonight. And this is only the second time since 2010 that the Denver Metro has been in extreme critical risk. So far today, we've seen a few fires pop up. The biggest down in Colorado Springs off Interquest, which forced evacuations. And thankfully, we have seen nothing major here in the metro. So let's get to our team coverage on this weather action day. We've got crews in Golden and down in Colorado Springs, but first let's check in with meteorologist Mike Nelson. And Mike, we hit record breaking heat today, hitting close to 90. 89 so far, very hot and dry and windy. Now this picture doesn't look like much, but let me step out of the way. This is our Viero camera in Alamosa, where they have blowing dust, 50 mile per hour winds and just absolutely awful visibility. This is the winds we have in the areas right now, 30 to 50 miles per hour. These are the wind speeds. The gusts are sometimes double this, and so it's a wicked day across eastern Colorado. And check out the temperatures. It's 92 currently at Lamar. We're 83 now after our high of 89 in Denver. Ray is at 90 degrees, but notice how much colder off to the west. There's a cold front coming our way, so there's actually a snow advisory in the mountains while we have wind and fire warnings on the plains, severe thunderstorms down here in the panhandle of Oklahoma, and the blowing dust that I showed you down in the San Luis Valley. So we have a variety of warnings and advisories in effect along the Front Range, all being brought to us by a very strong cold front that is sweeping into the state from the west. Ahead of it, the very powerful winds, the dry, hot air. Here comes the snow back behind it. So our weather headlines going into the weekend, strong winds at least until 9 o'clock, Tonight. They should calm down a little bit later. Turning colder tomorrow, the mountains get some snow. We're colder for the weekend, but then warmer and dry again next week. And wild pictures in Alamosa, Mike. That's crazy. All right, we'll talk later. So let's now get to Denver 7's Patrick Perez, who was in Colorado Springs, where dozens were forced from their homes for a fast moving wildfire. And Patrick, thankfully, crews were able to get it under control, but we can sure hear those winds. My gosh. Yeah, it is so windy, and the reason why I'm having to wear sunglasses is because we keep getting pelted by some debris. At one point today, the fire chief was concerned that we'd actually lose some homes, and let me show you exactly why that is. You can see just how close this fire was to those homes there. Some of them are under construction. You can even see that tree out in the distance that is still smoldering, and not too far from there are firefighters with those yellow jackets and the hats, making sure things do remain under control. I want to take you now to some video from earlier today where you could see more of the this fire and more up close footage. Chief Randy Royal with Colorado Springs FD says it started around 1230 this afternoon. This is near the Ent Credit Union headquarters and the Great Wolf Lodge. This is right off of Interquest Parkway and I-25. Evacuations started shortly after and thankfully have since been canceled. The fire was only between three to five acres, but because of the extreme fire danger today with these strong winds, as you're probably hearing right now, the warm temperatures, the low humidity, it was definitely definitely cause for concern. A hundred or so firefighters were on the scene here with help from multiple agencies and thankfully no structures were lost. I was really surprised that they were able to keep it from getting into the structures. Um, but that's again something like this. We're going to throw every resource we can at it. So because of how dangerous conditions are this evening, the fire chief says that fire crews will remain here at the scene for several hours. And we have learned that according to Governor Polis at a press conference this afternoon, he believes the cause of this fire was a welding accident. And and this shows again just how quickly a fire can spark under these conditions and spread fast. So dangerous out there. All right, Patrick, thank you so much. Of course, we are also monitoring other fires across our state, including one in Lamar and two others in Otero and Kiowa counties. Yeah, we're still working to learn more info about those, but back here in the Metro, crews have been hard at work putting out smaller fires that spark today, like this random trash fire in Highlands Ranch. So South Metro says the fire started in a garbage truck before the driver dumped the contents into a parking lot. Thankfully, crews were able to get the flames under control. In a majority of counties and cities in Colorado, 
are under fire bans. Most have stage one fire restrictions, which essentially means you can't light a fire unless you're using your personal grill at home. I know it's warm out, but right. today would be a dangerous day for a barbecue. Not a good idea. You're yeah. right. And experts say it is always fire season at this point. You no, know, historically now is when Colorado's wildfire season typically begins. So like you saw, Denver 7's Russell Haythorn is going to join us live. And, and Russell, today the state of Colorado released its summer wildfire outlook, and uh, this is certainly not encouraging news at all, Russell. Yeah, and the outlook is not great, especially because it's been so windy like it is right now and so dry this spring. In the high country, snowpack peaked out in March when it shouldn't peak out until early May. And state fire officials say while you shouldn't fear the wildfire forecast, you should certainly be on notice. State leaders showcasing Colorado's aerial firefighting assets, but also grounding themselves in the reality this could be a rough wildfire season. The only absolute is there are no absolutes. Oh, I think we should be concerned. Uh, you know, our drought conditions are, are such that it's, it's a high fire danger. Stan Hilke, executive director of the Colorado Department of Public Safety, says the prediction at the moment is hot, dry, and windy, just as another wildfire season begins. They have gotten progressively bigger, progressively worse, progressively more in the, just in the last several years. Uh, that's an indication that this problem is continuing to grow. And Governor Polis says the key takeaway from the Marshall Fire is that everyone living in Metro Denver and along the Front Range is now vulnerable to wildfire. Be vigilant, uh, not just when you're camping in the backcountry, in your neighborhood, in your open space near your home. You're barbecuing in your own backyard in the middle of town. You know, be careful. State officials promise they are more prepared this year than ever before. For a large air tanker, a second large air tanker um, on a four-month contract, three Type 1 helicopters, two Type 2 helicopters, two single-engine air tankers. We're still trying to outguess Mother Nature, and uh, sometimes that doesn't always work out. They say we all should be prepared as well. Make a list. If you do that kind of work ahead of time, then don't live in fear. Just live in preparation. In addition to those weather and environmental factors, there's another problem here in Colorado. Overall forest health is said to be in quote terrible shape. Officials said today that creates a high fire danger, especially where there's been substantial beetle kill and where there's heavy dead and down timber in the high country. That is why today fire officials say if you're planning on recreating outdoors this spring and this summer, be extra cautious and extra vigilant no matter what you're doing. We're live in Golden tonight. Russell Haythorn, Denver 7. Thank you very much, Russell. And with these wildfires today and the historic wildfires we've seen within the past year, lawmakers are making it clear that we have to get Colorado prepared with the proper equipment and crews needed to fight these flames. This morning, Governor Polis joined Congressman Joe Neguse and other local lawmakers to talk about Senate Bill 206, which would create two grant funds to help families and businesses trying to rebuild after a natural disaster. These funds can't replace what people have had and what they've built in their, in their homes and with their families. Um, they will help them build back and ensure that they remain a part of their community. The bill also creates the Office of Climate Preparedness, which would be tasked with coordinating disaster recovery efforts to make sure the state can better respond to natural disaster emergencies in the future. And you've seen the air. Smoke is also crossing into Colorado today from New Mexico, where there are multiple wildfires. And one of the largest is the Cook's Peak Fire in Mora County, which is right now burning 21,000 acres. It's about an hour north of Santa Fe near Las Vegas. And in Arizona, a fire near Flagstaff has now destroyed at least 30 homes. And this one's threatening hundreds of others. This fire has spread to more than 20,000 acres. Also, several communities have been ordered to evacuate near Prescott, Arizona, which has now exploded in size. And back here in our state, work is just beginning for Marshall fire victims who opted into the county debris cleanup. It's already been nearly four months since that fire destroyed more than a thousand homes in Louisville and Superior. The debris removal process is expected to last into the summer. And over on the DenverChannel.com, you will find multiple stories on wildfire danger here in Colorado and how the state is preparing for future fires. You can also get an in-depth look at Colorado wildfires on our free Denver 7 Plus app. It is available to download on your streaming device. 
We are now growing um, fresh produce all year round. Celebrating Earth Day with a brand new hydroponic farm. A large grant is helping bring fresh fruits and veggies to Denver students. Having this farm and like um, all the support we get to like give this food out to people is like really helping. And the Broncos get ready for next week's draft. And they have no worries about waiting for the second round. And that first day we'll watch Russell Wilson highlights.